So what is a bitmap index? Assume we are in the following situation. We have our table colleagues with three attributes. And here in this column, city, we have these values. And you already observed there are only few different values. So we only have three different values here. New York, Cupertino and Berlin. So how do we create a bitmap on this? For each value, we create a bit list. And this is displayed here. So we have three values. Therefore, we need three columns here. Each of those is called a bit list. So those are bit lists. And we have three of them. So this is one, two, three bit lists. So on this bit list has one bit for each of the tuples in this original table. It has the same number of tuples as the original table. And the convention we use is whenever the original table contains New York in the city column, we set the bit to 1. In all other cases, we set it to 0, which means, which means this must be set to 1 here, here it must be 0, then 1 again, because here we had a New York, 0, 1, and so forth. And we do that for each and every distinct value we have in this column. So here it's an easy case, we only have three values, therefore we only have three columns. So here it is Cupertino, we have to set the bit here and there, and for Berlin we have to set it here. And of course, as long as there aren't any null values in this original column, there must be one bit in every row here. So one bit must be set, all other bits must be set to zero. Notice that those bit lists again are represented in column layout, which means typically we store those bit lists in column orders. So the physical layout goes in this direction. This is a layout we use. We, we store this bit list for New York as a separate structure, typically then the one for Cupertino as a separate structure and so forth. But we don't have to do that. It's a similar concern as in row versus column layout. Row versus column layout. Now, the same considerations if you're unsure about that, look at my video on that. It's the same considerations here, whether to use a column layout, row layout, or you could use a column grouping, some vertical partitioning. It's the same trade-offs, just on those bit lists. So in the following, I will assume that all of this is stored using a column layout, which means I can very efficiently just scan the bits belonging to a specific value. So if I'm only interested in the bits that are set for this value Cupertino, I can efficiently do that by just scanning those bits. So this is the idea of a bitmap index. And of course, we could also create a bitmap for one, for one of the other columns. Let's, so let's create a second bitmap index. Let's create a bitmap index on this column as well, on the street column. How does that look like? That looks as follows. So here we have four different values, Uni Street, Max Street, Long Street, and MS Street. So we need four bit lists here, one, two, three, four. And again, we have the same effect, same as before as in the city bitmap. Here we set this bit to one, if and only if this represents Uni Street in the original column street. Yeah, this is the case here, so this must be one. Here it's zero again, then this is one again, and so forth. So again, we have the effect, if you look at the rows here in this bitmap, only one of the bits is set to one, all other bits are set to zero. So in total, if n is the number of tuples, so if n represents the number of tuples, tuples in the original table, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So there can only be 12 bits in this bitmap set to one, everything else must be set to zero. So one footnote about that, notice that as soon as we created such a bitmap, we could actually discard the original values. Now we could discard this and that because that information is still represented in the database. So of course, this has also some drawbacks. Now, if you want to know the information, for example, if you want to know the street where Tim lives in, it's not enough to just look at the colleagues relation. We would then have to join it again with that specific bitmap which is this bitmap here, and this one represents this information that Tim lives in Uni Street. So we would have to join the bitmap with a colleague's relation. So typically, bitmaps are created redundantly, as many other indexes as well. They are created 
redundantly in addition to the original data. And now if you update anything, of course, if you update this value, you also have to update the corresponding bitmap. So let's look at the operations I can do with a bitmap. So we need some space. Let's, let's get rid of the original table, just keep the bitmaps and let's see what we can do. Of course, what you can do is all kinds of logical operations. So let's start with simple filter conditions, simple filter conditions. How would you evaluate that? For instance, if you want to know the tuples where it holds that the city corresponds to Berlin. Well, well, that's really easy. You just have to read those bits. Again, I said this is represented in column layout. So basically those zeros are adjacent in memory on disk, whatever you want to use. And then you basically scan over those entries over this bit list and only if this is set to one you know directly this is Berlin. So it's just a matter of scanning this. If you have a filter like city equals Berlin you just scan over that column and with that you can evaluate with that you can easily find out the tuples where that qualifies. Or of course you could do stuff like city uh, Let's say that's the first case. Let's do a second example. Let's say city equals Berlin, Berlin, or city equals something like whatever, New York. That's also very easy. In that case, you have to scan both columns, and then you can evaluate that condition if one of the bits is set then you know this tuple qualifies. So basically what you can do with that is you can quickly identify tuples that qualify under certain conditions. So, so this makes also a lot of sense if you have conditions with respect to different attributes. So here this was only with respect to the city attribute, but what happens if you have an, uh, something like city equals Berlin and street equals long street. Okay, so how do you evaluate that? Well, it's the same thing again. You basically end those two bit lists. So here there's one bit list representing the city. These are the tuples where the city equals Berlin and, and these are the tuples where the street corresponds to long street. So the basic thing you, you have to do here is you just perform a logical end over the different bits. Well, and of course you don't have to do that bit by bit because if this is represented adjacent, if this is contiguous, this basically means that you can end 32 or 64 bits or whatever word size you have at the same time. So basically what we want to have is we have a bit list here representing this one, this is Berlin. So this is Berlin. And then we end it logically with Long Street. And the, the result of that, of course, is another vector. That is a logical vector, but we don't have to do that looping over the different tuples, of course. We can do that with a logical end operation, chunk by chunk. You could also use SIMD if you want. But basically, a larger chunk of those bits can be ended in a single CPU operation. Therefore, these logical operations on bitmaps are super efficient. So, this is what you can do with bitmaps. Logical operations work very well. It's not only end, you can use OR, XOR, negation, whatever, whatever. It's all super efficient. And therefore, bitmaps are widely used in databases. So how much space does a bitmap consume? Well, that's something important to consider. So let's assume we have a cardinality of our column um, that's called D. D is a cardinality of the column. So it's a number of different tuples in a specific column. So for example, if we look at the cardinality of column city, for example, that was three. D city is three of course and D street is four. Those are columns of very low cardinality. And then we have the number of tuples in a column. Let's say that is N, a number 
of tuples of a specific relation. So this is typically also depicted as follows. Uh, we say stroke colleagues stroke and then in this case this was 12 mm -hmm. but typically this is of course way larger i mean for 12 tuples you, it doesn't make a difference whether you create an index anyhow those are textbook examples or video examples i should call them but in the general case n is way bigger so basically the size of such a bitmap is the number of bit lists which is d d represents the number of bit lists times the number of tuples so basically you have d times n that is the number of bits you obtain and let's make it more concrete let's assume n is set to 1 million so are 1 million tuples and let's assume the cardinality is say 1000 1000 different values this means we end up with 1 billion different bits we have to represent well 1 billion different bits how much data is that? That is roughly 120 megabytes. 120 megabytes just for one bitmap, for one attribute with a cardinality of 1000. Yeah, and you, then you only have an index on one of the attributes. You don't have an index on the other attributes. So the bitmaps may become pretty large. So typically the argument is, well, bitmaps, you should only use them if the cardinality of the domain is low here we only had three different values so that's typically a consideration to look at those cardinalities however in a real system bitmaps are not used without compression you should compress those bitmaps and then it turns out that the cardinality doesn't matter so much anymore because and you can also observe it here in the end what happens is the number of ones is unchanged independent of the number of columns you add in the bitmap so if you increase the domain, you, you add more columns. However, then you also distribute the ones over the different columns, assuming a uniform distribution. The more columns you have, the larger are the blocks where you only have zeros. And whenever you have blocks that represent the same value, compression can kick in very effectively. And that is something we want to look at in the following videos. So bottom line, don't be afraid. So even if the domains are large, Bitmaps may be used efficiently, but only if you compress them in addition. And the uncompressed bitmaps may not be such a great choice. So to wrap up, there are two important applications really. And that is, as I explained with those examples, the WHERE clause. Whenever you have a WHERE clause with rather complex AND and OR conditions touching many, many attributes, then bitmaps are very important. So bitmaps are typically used in so-called OLAP systems online analytical processing online analytical processing that's a very prominent application especially in the context of data warehouses dwh maybe you heard that i don't know but there you will find that it's so some products have support that for that for example oracle supports bitmap indexes but other database products support that as well and the second application and that is why i'm explaining it here already relatively early in this course it's a building block for query processing so just like hashing which appears all over the place bitmaps also can be used internally by the database system to represent tuples or columns that qualify or that do not qualify. So we will look at that in detail in the context of query processing later on. But for the moment, keep it in mind, it's a very easy yet powerful tool for query processing. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did, or you look at our website, infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.